Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Another motorcycle crash has claimed the life of a 24-year-old farmer in St. Elizabeth. It happened on the Ridge Pen Main Road about midday on Thursday. Chad Burton, who is from Beacon in St. Elizabeth, was reportedly driving his motorcycle when it collided with a Nissan pickup truck traveling in the opposite direction. Mr. Burton was hit from the motorcycle and landed in a gate. He was decapitated. It's not clear what caused the collision. It comes a day after a two-bike collision claimed four lives in Sheffield, Westmoreland. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is now on the site at the Mandela Highway Improvement Project where there is more trouble between local workers and the project contractor China Harbour Engineering Company Limited check. The Jamaican workers took protest action at the site again on Friday, this time using debris to block the entrance of one of the Chinese company office. The workers were demanding a meeting to settle out standing issues. 250 of them appear an hour. You understand? That's the only way to them appear away. I look on this. I that them say we supposed to get. That them say, I'm not going to say which part that we, we, we are get. Look on the paper. Eh? Look on the paper where it show you. It's a different, different figure than what we are get. So I rub with that. The police and the member of parliament were called in and the debris later cleared. The liaison officers who are the representatives of the neighbors, they will be meeting with the Chinese harbor management to trash out whatever issues they have in terms of concerns, safety gears, etc. etc. But our presence here is to ensure that the peace is clear. A four-member technical delegation from Venezuela is in the island meeting with government officials regarding Jamaica's proposal to repurchase Venezuela's 49% shareholding in oil refinery Petrojam. A statement from the Minister of Energy said the meeting is the latest chapter in a process of intense engagement between the Holness administration and its Venezuelan counterpart about the future ownership of Petrojam. The minister says today's meeting is mainly to review documents in the repurchase proposal. Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley submitted the proposal on March 22 during a working visit to Venezuela. Dr. Wheatley says the proposal is consistent with the government's plan to assume full control of the country's energy security and facilitate necessary upgrading work at Petrojam. Jamaica formally offered to buy back the Petrojam shares in March following a fallout caused by a U.S. government executive order which restricted transactions with oil-rich Venezuela. On the heels of Thursday's observation of World No Tobacco Day, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says despite making strides, Jamaica still has more work to do to tackle the impact of tobacco on cardiovascular health. Meanwhile, a reminder from the Health Ministry that smoking is still prohibited in specified public spaces under the revised 2013 Public Health Act. Here is TVJ's Shamela Mitchell with that report. Data from the Ministry of Health indicates that tobacco is responsible for 11% of all non-communicable diseases and 3% of communicable deaths in Jamaica. Which is why Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says more needs to be done to tackle this public health crisis. As you know, um, a number of amendments to the main legislation took place some years before me. I think Dr. Fenton Ferguson should be credited for leading that charge and the most notably would be the restrictions on smoking in public spaces. Um, those amendments are in effect. However, despite the efforts made to reduce the impact of tobacco in Jamaica, Dr. Tufton says there is still a concern about those who breach the amended legislation. In terms of persons not observing the law, smoking within public spaces, uh, there is some enforcement, but I think the enforcement needs to be improved, and that's something that we're speaking with the authorities about, those who are charged with the enforcing. Dr. Tufton says plans are well underway to advance the legislation, with Cabinet already giving its approval. And the comprehensive legislation is going to address some of the important areas like um, branding, advertising, um, advertise, exposure to minors, um, you know, safe zones, 
to prevent exposure of the product or use of the product within certain zones like school zones. World Tobacco Day was celebrated on Thursday under the theme Tobacco and Heart Disease. Shamela Mitchell, TVJ News. Children's advocate Dan Gordon Harrison has raised concerns regarding the case of the nine-year-old ward of the state who was reportedly raped on Labor Day. Mrs. Gordon Harrison says the child is yet to see her mother. The girl was reportedly raped by another ward of the state at the Strathmore Gardens Children's Home in St. Catherine. But Mrs. Gordon Harrison says the child's mother has reported that she has not seen her daughter since the incident took place over a week ago. Certainly in keeping with best practice, usually when things happen to children of tender years, and nine years is considered tender years, you would understand the need for the parental involvement and contact to comfort the child, to understand what is happening as well from a parent's perspective. And so in keeping with international standards and best practice, it is a concern that this child has not yet seen her mother. She says she's still investigating the mother's claim. This is the mother's assertion. We are to get a response to this because usually what we do is, you know, especially when something seems untoward, is we certainly get the account of the other side as well. And so that's a part of the continuing probe that we're doing. The Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, as well as the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, are also probing the alleged rape. Yesterday, State Minister for Youth, Floyd Green, said he has instructed that the girl's family be kept up to date on her care. Executive Director of the National Integrity Action, NIA, Professor Trevor Monroe, has joined the debate about sexual abuse against women. Speaking earlier this week at the Belfield Primary School's retirement function for teachers in St. Mary, Mr. Monroe said too often Jamaicans stay silent on issues of child abuse and sexual harassment in the workplace. He noted that turning a blind eye to these cases will not stop the problem, but speaking up about the matter will help to address it. We have to play our part in identifying and bringing to justice all of those big people. Regrettably among them, some family members who the youngsters trust and have confidence in. Some even pastors, men of the cloth, who use position to abuse our children, particularly our young girls. Let us not blind our eyes Thousands of youngsters, the data tells us, are being abused each year. It has to stop. Each of us has to play our part in bringing to justice those managers in top jobs who use their position to sexually harass women at their workplace and deny them promotion unless they grant favors. That has to stop it. And the NIA executive director is urging the government to address poor road conditions and other problems affecting residents in St. Mary. He said the parish has contributed a lot to Jamaica's economy, agriculture, sports and music, as, and the residents deserve better. Sustain for such dedicated service. It is more than about time that St. Mary and its people reap better rewards, in better roads, in easier access to deep rural districts, reap rewards in better water supplies and more opportunities, particularly for the youth. It is only fair after all that you have done and are doing for Jamaica that Jamaica should do more for you in this parish. Three schools and a community centre in Cross Keys, Manchester are to benefit from a rainwater harvesting project that's expected to increase their access to potable water. The Manchester Parish Development Committee is undertaking the project. We have more in this report. A $3.5 million investment from the Environmental Foundation of Jamaica, EFJ, to make the use of pit toilets a thing of the past at schools like Cross Keys High in Manchester. The school's principal, Ralph Nelson, says the absence of water has been a challenge at the institution. We know that no pipe water runs to the institution. 
and we have over seven, between 700 to 1,000 students at this school over the period. And as you can imagine, you hear the anxiety express when water is short, when water is not around, how tempers can flare. And so, yes, we experienced that too. The Manchester Parish Development Committee launched a project at the Cross Keys Community Centre on Thursday to renovate and expand or replace rainwater harvesting storage facilities. The project, which is scheduled to start next Monday, will be done at the Woodland Basic, Grove Town Primary and Cross Keys High Schools, as well as the Cross Keys Community Centre. Chairman of the Cross Keys Development Area Committee, Smidley Reed, explained that the work will include cleaning and painting existing water tanks, making and installing concrete covers, water pumps, and water harvesting devices such as filters. The project makes provision for filtered water to be made available to these institutions. and to increase and improve the quality of water served to these various populations. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, says its response systems are in a state of readiness for today's start of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season. Weather forecasters predict that the season, which continues until November 30, will be above average, with a 70% likelihood of 10 to 16 named storms. Five to nine of those storms could become hurricanes, including one to four major ones. An average hurricane season has 12 named storms, of which six become hurricanes. And with sections of the region still recovering from the 2017 hurricane season, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency says it has also made improvements to its response systems. In an interview with our news center, Executive Director of the agency, Ronald Jackson, outlined some of the areas where gaps were identified. Some of the logistical challenges, trying to see where we can improve that, identifying partners have equipment for moving people and resources to the region. One of the areas we had some challenges with was in, in, in moving supplies through communities that were in hilly interior, uh, sort of cut off by road. And, and we've, so we've been actively looking to see how we could bridge that gap. That will include uh, some cooperative agreements and, and those we have advanced on in, in many instances, signing a number of MOUs. A week after Mayor Motley led Barbados Labour Party BLP swept to power in the general election, grabbing all 30 seats in the House of Assembly, one of the winners has jumped ship. News came last night that newly elected St. Michael West Member of Parliament, Bishop Joseph Atherley, has severed ties with the BLP to become the new leader of the opposition. Prime Minister Mia Motley was last night informed by way of a letter from Bishop Atherley. This was further confirmed in a letter from Governor General Dame Sandra Mason. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Motley has painted a sobering picture of the Barbadian economy. Ms. Motley said an update on the way forward would come today and we'll continue to monitor the developments in Barbados and provide you with updates. News for the field now. Spanish Prime Minister Mario Rajoy has lost a no-confidence vote in Parliament over a corruption scandal. The details from the CNN. Well, it means that Mariano Rajoy, after seven years of, as Spain's Prime Minister, is likely to fall later on today. We're expecting the actual vote of no confidence to take place in about two or three hours from now in Madrid, George. And um, he has... Already he is facing a situation where the opposition party has tabled this vote of no confidence and said that they have managed to glean enough votes to form a slim majority in the parliament. That means that Rajoy will probably be ousted later on today and that we'll probably be seeing Pedro Sanchez from uh, the main opposition party uh, taking over as interim prime minister. Spain. And it's now time for sports. Jamaican sprinter Nesta Carter has responded through his MVP track club to Thursday's decision to uphold the move to strip him and his teammates of their sprint relay gold medal from the 2008 Beijing Olympics. 
Carter lost his appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport to regain the medal, which was stripped by the International Olympic Committee following an anti-doping rule violation. But in a statement on MVP's Twitter page, the sprinter said he was deeply upset by the cast decision. Carter insisted that he has always been a clean athlete and would never knowingly do anything to risk his reputation and that of his country and cause pain to his teammates. The 32-year-old argued that the substance that was in his body is now recognized as being a contaminant in many products and stressed that the CAS has accepted that the substance was not on the prohibited list prior to the 2008 Olympics. He added that, quote, even though I must accept responsibility for what has happened, it is difficult to accept that I could be in breach of the rules. Even if I had known I had consumed the substance, which I did not, I could not have known at the time that the substance was prohibited. I'm deeply sorry for what has happened and the pain and loss it brings. End quote. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon and have a great weekend.